Today we're talking about buying brake booster cores. You've decided that an original core is what you want to go for instead of a remanufactured booster. Great, you're going to need to send it to us to get it rebuilt, but we want to equip you to know how to buy the best core for your money instead of getting one off the internet that is junk and can't be rebuilt. I know that these Cardone remanufactured boosters look tempting. They have the Bendix branding on them. However, the internals have been totally gutted. And when they break, which they do very quickly, you will be left with just the outside shell and nothing else of value. The reproductions aren't even trying to look like an original. The metal is extremely thin walled and easy to dent and break. And just like the internals on that remanufactured booster, they fail very quickly. So you're looking on eBay for a new core and these two pop up. They both look reasonably similar and they're similarly priced. So how can we tell which one is worth your money? The first and arguably most important factor to look for when buying a used brake booster core is the condition of this plastic rear hub. This one is totally annihilated and this booster is worth almost nothing because this shows us that the internals have been crushed. And that rear hub that sticks out the back is what breaks most often. So we don't have many backup parts and that piece cannot be reproduced well. So that first core is pretty much useless. The second one, we can see from the exterior that the insides of this booster are probably in usable shape. Next up, let's talk about rods. Now this booster uses a teardrop style rod and I'm leaving it up to you guys to do the research to make sure that the studs on the firewall, master cylinder, and the rods match your car. So both of these booster have the rear rods and the front rods are another story. Neither have a check valve and that's totally fine. They're a dime a dozen but only the booster on the right has the master cylinder rod. Now, if you buy a core without one of these, you're gonna end up paying about $50 for a new one from us, maybe more, maybe less from someone else. So keep that in mind as you are booster core shopping. Also keep an eye out for extra components such as a spacer plate. This booster I'm holding here uh, has the rust that shows that they used to have a spacer plate on it, but it did not come with the spacer. Whereas this booster on the left does in fact have a spacer, but it's bent at the tab there and someone has welded it on. This actually isn't the original booster for the car. Someone has just welded new studs on it to make it work for their application. Something to keep an eye out for. One final thing to look for is whether or not this booster has been rebuilt before. There are several ways to check, but let's look at the crimps on this booster. They aren't uniform, some of them are broken open, and that's normal, but we know that someone has been inside this booster before, whereas this one has never been opened from the factory. You can see the crimps are shallow, deep, shallow, and then there's a space, and it follows the same sequence, shallow, deep, shallow. That one has never been opened. Keep these tips in mind as you search through eBay's endless listing of original power brake booster cores. I encourage you to join Facebook forums or online forums so that you're sure that the cores you're buying are exactly what is original to your car. And once you do find that perfect core, send it to us at Power Brake Booster Exchange. We'll give it a full rebuild and make sure it's in perfect working order and looking sharp when it's ready to be put back on your car. Fill out our shipping form online and then ship that in the box with your booster. Make sure to include your own personal details as well as details about your car and what type of finish you would like on your booster and we will rebuild it and send it back your way. Thanks for watching.